Uh, welcome. On behalf of Heartcrafted Foundation, I invite you again to another episode of COVID Cares. This is a series of webinars which we are doing with people who have done extraordinary work during the COVID times and the lockdown period. We all know that when the Janta curfew happened on 23rd and actually the country went into complete lockdown 25th of March, all of us were very worried. All of us were very panicky. Most of us, people like you and me, talk, thought about our food, about our supplies, healthcare, emergency, distant relatives who are far away, what will happen to them. But there is a large segment of the society which we are not conscious for, possibly at that point of time, whose challenges were very much different. They were not having cash. They started losing their jobs. They were not having food. They were struggling to get health care. Many of them did not have a place to live. And we have seen thousands and thousands of them started walking on the roads of India, you know, trying to go home, which at times hundreds or thousands of kilometers away. We also know that now we know that there are an equal number of people who did not move out of their homes, but got stuck with similar problems or same problems. We got aware about it after some time. Many of us started supporting in whatever way we can. There had been instances of maybe thousands, maybe lakhs of Indians who had gone out of their way to help out people so that they can survive during this time. We have been talking to those people during this series to bring out those stories, which otherwise which we may be missing. Today, we are talking to one person who is working with the underprivileged for a long time. I'll come back to his profile. But here is one individual who was not woken up to a situation just because there is a lockdown. He is acutely aware of the challenges that is facing our country and who got active as soon as the lockdown happened. Let me introduce Mr. Sharad Chandra Das. But before I go into his profile, let me you know, spend a minute to talk about the Heartcrafted Foundation. This is a foundation which focus on working with underprivileged women in giving them a sustainable livelihood. It intervenes in multiple levels, at times in the supply chain, at times uh, for skill building, getting market access, getting working capital. The idea is for a control group to have a higher level of income through a sustained intervention, which may at times happen for a couple of years or more than that. Let me come back to Mr. Das and give a brief profile of his. Mr. Sarachandra Das has graduated, is a graduate from agricultural science, graduate in agricultural science from Assam Government University and holds a postgraduate diploma in rural development and a certified expert in microfinance from the Frankfurt School of Finance and Management. He is also an MBA from Indian Institute of Business Management. He worked with Rashtriya Gramin Vikas Nidhi, Guwahati, Sadhan, where he holds a board position New Delhi, and also HDFC Bank in the Agri and Microfinance section. Tilly joined Ramin Sahara as a CEO. Mr. Das has a strong grassroots understanding as well as managerial experience, including international exposure. At present, he is serving as a governing board member of DIA Foundation, Center for Microfinance and Livelihood, Gramin Development and Finance Private Limited, Gramin Silk Producers Company Limited, and Arpan Trust. 
Mr. Das also worked as a consultant for the World Bank <coughs> project with Mart New Delhi and been on the board of SESTA and also organization for rural improvement. Gramin Sahara is a NGO which is based out of a place called Shaigao, which is around 37 kilometers from Guwahati, part of the Kamrup district. And also some of the other organizations, primarily the producer organization, which I mentioned, is also based out of the same place. Needless to say, we all know, Northeast, in spite of its huge potential, has not really developed as many of us expected. And whatever development has happened has remained restricted to places which are urban, like Guwahati. If you move out of the city of Guwahati, you will find a significant amount of underprivileged people. Shaigao is not an exception. And of course, Mr. Das and his team works for a large space around Shaigao. Today, we'll specifically hear from Mr. Das about the work that they have done during the COVID times to, to help underprivileged individuals. Mr. Das, let me come back to you. When this COVID happened, as you mentioned, all of us were very worried, very concerned. You know, you are one of the people who are working with these underprivileged for many years. You obviously understood the pulse of the situation much faster. But nevertheless, I'm sure the challenges which you faced, the cash flow, the loss of business, the loss of uh, you know, production, the fear, the panic, the healthcare challenges, not only for the employees who are working with you, but also the people who are your beneficiaries and also the people around who may not be directly your beneficiary, but given the fact that you are running organizations which are focused on the social sector, you are some way morally obligated to support them. And I'm sure you did a lot of good support. But tell me what went through your mind when the Janta curfew happened or rather when the actual lockdown happened? How did you, how did you react to start with? Okay. Uh, good evening. And uh, let me first thank you uh, for uh, you know, inviting me to this conversation on COVID care. Uh, See, the moment uh, this lockdown was imposed by the government because of that situation, as you know, we have already been, you know, we, are, we, are, uh, we have been working in the uh, rural development sector for last 20 years, almost 20 years. So we have, I would say, have a large family. I mean, we have been working with close to 60,000 families through different project interventions. And we have also have around uh, 250 people that are working in different institutions, uh, I mean, of Dramin Sahara Social Enterprise Group. And the moment actually it was, uh, you know, lockdown was declared or the lockdown was imposed. So, uh, you know, initially, like uh, most of the other people, we also had to be within the four walls of the house. So it was not possible to go out uh, uh, from house. So, but it really actually, you know, since we know that we understand that uh, in the field level, the people that we are working with, uh, you know, there are a lot of families which are really vulnerable. I mean, they are just, you know, earning and they're somehow they are sustaining their livelihoods. So it actually really, you know, the moment, uh, you know, I just, I started thinking that if this lockdown continues for a long time, I mean, more, uh, you know, days, then how these people will uh, be able to manage and how would be able to, I mean, uh, you know, manage their food items or other requirements I mean, they, that they need for day-to-day, -day, uh, you know, sustain, sustaining. So that is why I think uh, not well, more than 10 days or 12 days I was within home. Then immediately I started moving. I mean, I just wanted to see what is happening, you know, in the ground or what, how the families are actually, uh, I mean, managing how they are, uh, Know, collecting their food items or how they are being able to manage uh, their families. So that way, uh, I just started, you know, with my team, I started uh, traveling uh, to the villages. And in that, of course, uh, it was also helpful that since I am also associated with 
Indian Red Cross Society. So, you know, movement was not uh, a problem for me. So that is why I could uh, very openly, you know, travel to the villages. And we saw that, yes, really, you know, as, as and of course, this time I saw that that uh, we also saw many families which you know we are not working with but they are economically so distressed really i mean uh, we are surprised to know that even within our area of operation itself there are so many poor families so many distressed families so then i thought no immediately we have to do something for these people at least you know uh, you know first they have to we have to save our lives i mean the food materials we have to have so that is why immediately we started mobilize some resources some resources means uh, like you know Ajim Premji Foundation. Then we have also at that moment of time only uh, there was a coalition. We call it as you know uh, rapid uh, COVID response coalition because it is a all India coalition. So we also approached them for some resources so that we can mobilize some uh, you know relief materials for these people. So accordingly we could uh, mobilize some resources and we are very thankful to Ajim Premji Foundation for their generous support for you know, giving us funding support to provide relief materials to different people. And accordingly, in Meghalaya and in Assam, we could provide relief materials to many families, those who were actually in need. And at that point of time, because they did not have, you know, uh, and it was actually a sudden kind of thing, you know, this imposition was uh, all of a sudden. It was only a 20th and it was from 23rd of uh, March. So that way people actually did not have much time to prepare for a long time of, uh, this uh, lockdown. So that is why, you know, this this stage we saw and we started uh, distributing relief materials, and uh, we could raise uh, many families. I mean, in the villages which were in need of uh, relief materials, which also, as per COVID protocol, because government, you know, it was a very kind of uh, you know aggressively government also uh, started uh, giving the suggestions, the protocols. So accordingly, uh, for that also we needed. Uh, what you call sanitizers, we needed masks, so all those kind of things we needed. But initially, since food was uh, more crucial at that point of time, so we started giving food materials. And in that, of course, I have to take the name of here Social Enterprise, which is promoted by uh, Jonali Shoikia. Then we, she also helped us in providing, uh, because we have we are also working with a lot of weavers, and they are basically poor women. And they are, there are many families we are, which are headed by the women. And they actually were earning something from weaving activities, but because of this sudden sudden lockdown, they were also not in a position to, uh, you know, weave or produce uh, their products. And even if somebody were at home doing something, but there was no market since market was completely closed. So that in that case, uh, we thank uh, here social enterprise groups for providing support to us to give some relief materials, some uh, you know uh, even in case also to support these women. So that way we started uh, working with those people. Then, as I said, Coca-Cola India also supported us. Then uh, Azim Premji Foundation also supported us. So it actually came uh, to our mind that since we have been working and we understand the ground reality of the people, their income level, their problems, their you know case inflow, all those things we more or less understood over a period of time when we have been being engaged with them for so many years. So that way it came to our mind and immediately we started working and since then of course till the other uh, you know date i would say that you know till the month of uh, uh, last month actually we have been working in this space uh, for providing support to the needy families <clears throat> so uh, this is uh, you know you gave a very uh, large number you know 65000 families you mentioned right you know uh, is it 65000 yeah, no, no, we are working with 50 or 60,000 families, but it was not possible last, uh, for us to provide relief yeah, to course. all I those understand. families. Yeah. I think, I we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have yeah, provided relief, I think, around 8 to 10,000 families we have been, uh, we were able to provide the support. And it was also not possible for us to move to other states, actually, because that time, you know, there was uh, interstate travel restrictions. So in Meghalaya, only in the border areas of Kamrup district, one district because uh, the deputy collector actually he took initiative so that we can send our relief materials to that uh, that district. So that way actually we could reach Meghalaya, but not in Nagaland or not to Mizoram or other places. Even within Assam also we could not uh, move to other districts. So that was uh, a problem for us. But actually if we could have traveled to other districts, most probably we could have also mobilized some resources for 
the people that need needed service at that point of time in those districts. <clears throat> Please, so, so you know uh, when you are yeah. talking of support, you know I, I I assume that people would have mostly you know Coca Cola or Azim Premji has been cash. Now you you gave uh, you know you you may not have given food, but you must have given food uh, you know uh, cereal ration pulses ration ration. So uh, how did you uh, how did you get that? Because all the shops are also I mean you. Of course, run those that unit also. I know that you also have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of grocery entity. But you know, ten thousand people for. Uh, so, did you uh, procure it from some large players or government, or how how did it happen? I mean, uh, actually, for that we had to seek permission from the district administration. And of course, I have to mention here that during that time, no, this COVID period. we really we are very thankful to the district administration and also the local administration because you know whenever we needed support so they actually extended us a support like you know since we had to as you are rightly asking that we had to procure this uh, you know grocery items this uh, you know uh, materials so it was not possible to get it locally here at soyong so we had to buy it procure it from guwahati so in that case actually we had to obtain permission from the district administration and we could easily i mean uh, procure those things from guwahati it was not possible from a local place okay. so from district administration actually we had to seek permission and we got the permission for that uh, so uh, you know the uh, uh, you know you you said you know you were there for so many years you know you were king always on the field but for you also at times it was surprising that you know how people are struggling right i mean uh, for survival. so uh, you know one is of course they got support from you know people like you maybe at some time government also uh, you know came in but you also have uh, you know quite a number of these people as you said that you know they are working with your organizations right, right. so did you right. uh, start uh, some way the operations after the restrictions are little relaxed i mean now because lockdown is 5 months behind us so after one two months did you start something in terms of uh, uh, operations with restrictions and of course safety and all of that yes yes actually see initially uh, mars mars it was from 23rd so april may this complete two months actually this immediately this lockdown was declared so we call back all the staff that please reach your home and okay. of course also we have also our own facilities in the branches where they stay by stay so okay. the people who are say, living in uh, you know i mean in mizoram or in uh, nagaland so we advise them to stay back because you know uh, if they come back so it may also be difficult for them to again go back but at that point of time those who are in a position to get back to their home so we advise them to get back to their home and those who are not in a position to so they are, we just advise them to stay back there itself so till june these people were either at home or either at branch but there is no operation and of course immediately after this uh, lockdown was declared whatever protocol was you know uh, advised by the government so we also had our own internal uh, advisories to all our employees so that you know they use the mask they use the sanitizer they use you know uh, do the i mean maintain the social distance and all other kind of support and advisories actually we started giving right from the beginning and only from june uh, the people have again gone back to the branches and of course that time also uh, there also internally we also develop some protocols like you know if they go to a group meeting what how they have to you know maintain the how they have to organize the meeting how they have to maintain the distance and what are the protocols so all those things actually internally we also uh, kind of you know uh, we develop some kind of standards some kind of protocols and uh, we advise them and even after that also two of my colleagues actually got infected by covid okay so But I yeah two of them, yeah <laughs> two of them them got infected by covid and they were in hospital for 14 days but fortunately luckily they are back now so they have again joined back at home and also like as i said no all the branches we made it mandatory that 
every week at least twice they have to sanitize the house i mean offices they have to sanitize all their equipment they actually normally used to task when they work so all those protocols we also internally develop and we actually uh, took care as far as possible and wherever there is not i mean uh, uh, without any field visit or without any physical contact to anyone so we just stop them going to the field and uh, accordingly fortunately out of 250 people so 2% have unfortunately i mean i think also that is also not uh, impacted in our office hour or in our office activities but somehow uh, during their marketing or during their visit to some other places they got infected so in that way i think uh, we could take uh, at least uh, the required level of uh, care for our employees and uh, of course uh, because of uh, financial situation for two months we had to uh, of course deduct 10 20 percent of salary for two months but after that we started giving so now we are giving we are not cutting any salary and of course at the head of which level i think uh, around uh, i think 10 people still senior people they have voluntarily actually taking 10 to 20 percent salary cut of their own voluntarily we are not imposing anything including me actually i am also taking 25 percent salary cut uh, as of now, and I, I have decided to continue it till the end of this financial year. But you know, field level people, we have not tasked, we have not, I mean, uh, we, we have taken the care as far as possible. I mean, uh, it's also not possible because we are not sitting in a single office. So, although we have been uh, giving regularly the protocols, giving them advisories, so it also depends on the people who are heading those branches. Right. So that, but I think uh, I think considering the number of cases that have been positive, so I think we could take uh, enough care for our employees also because two percent out of only out of two hundred people, so it is less than one percent. Right, right. No, I yeah. I know, and you know, especially when you have field staff, you know, they are uh, always uh, you know on the road, and and in any case, I think at some point or other, all of us will be affected <laughs> by this because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think there is any <laughs> escape. So, you know, it is very good to hear that, you know, you sort of, uh, you know, went for maybe a very minimal cut. You know, if I look at, uh, you know, the numbers where people are saying 18 million have lost jobs and everywhere, you know, the 30, 40, 50, 75, no salary, you know, I know organizations yeah. which has neither asked them to leave nor they are paying. They are saying you are on, uh, you know, they are saying far long. You know, <laughs> four months, <laughs> sit at home. Right. So uh, uh, that is something very commendable. But, you know, uh, in, uh, I am sure, you know, when it, this happened, you know, everybody's mind, you know, especially the people who are working and more than that, the people who are not your staff, but, you know, working with you as weavers or producer company or, you know, any other way. The first fear of them is that, you know, uh, what will happen to me, right? I mean, will Grameen right. Sahara be taking care of me, right? Because, you know, we all say uh, employee first and all, but when Brava hits yeah. the road, many people are not really, uh, you know, so how did you manage the communication? Because people are also so distributed for you. So did you do some call with them or, or how did you manage, you know, or what sort of communication you gave? Yeah, communication, see, now actually we have learned a lot of things. All those things are already available. Now, today we are talking. Uh, we are <laughs> in a Zoom call, but <laughs> we could have done it. It's long four before. years, but we are, suddenly we'll all learn. Yeah. Yeah. So now we are doing board meetings, so all Zoom call or Google Meet. In fact, I have uh, recently joined two board meetings of Southern. You know, all you know people are sitting across the country, but we are meeting in Zoom call or either or in Webex or maybe in Zoom, I mean, uh, Google Meet. So that we actually immediately after uh, this lockdown was declared, we started chatting through initially through this uh, what you call uh, WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. So WhatsApp group we already had, but we normally did not use this uh, you know video calling another thing. We only used to send messages, get messages. So we are using that. But immediately after this lockdown was there, so we had to sit idle only at uh, at the home. So we started creating groups. Like then we started having our video calling through uh, this WhatsApp call. Then we immediately faced that, no, there is a limitation in terms of numbers of people that can attend through WhatsApp call. 
So then we moved to Zoom. Then again, we moved to WebEx. Then, I mean, we have learned a lot of things. And during that period, mostly, I mean, we have done all these communications for uh, our video calling only. And in fact, when we send the people to the branches, when we send the people to the branches, then first thing there, we ask the hill staff to collect the mobile numbers of the people who are our beneficiaries. And we started calling them, we started giving them advices about uh, you know how to take care from, not to get infected from COVID and all. So then uh, there was, I think, during the whole month of you know May and June, there was a continuous communication over telephone with the beneficiaries. And also for, for these employees, we had different groups. And of course, that has become a part of the system now. And every day, day because we have also some uh, you know, area demarcations, like one person look after, look after this area, the other person looks after that area. So maybe under him, there are 25 people, uh, under him, uh, 20 people are there. So they have different uh, you know, groups. So they, every day now, after 5 o'clock, 5 to 6.30, they have to have video calling. And they have to also share the screenshot by 6.30 with me or my operation head or somebody who is a senior position. So they have to share that. So now it has actually become a part of our system now. And I think if we stop doing this, then we'll be uh, think, I mean, we'll be realizing that we are actually not doing something else, something. So that is why it has now become a part of our system. And uh, now we are much more common, I mean, uh, what are you, more connected with the field people now. Earlier, you know, once in a while we used to speak over telephone and video calling hardly we did, we used to be. But now, you know, almost every day there is a connection, there is a contact between the head office and the branches, branches with the area or field team with the head office team. So that way actually, you know, now I think this communication has got, uh, I would say that much more strengthened than before. So yes, through video calling, through you know digital way only, we we could uh, you know create this entire you know communication system, and much better than before. And in fact, we have to give the credit for this to COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm sure during this communication, you have been constantly saying that you know I will, uh, you know we the organization will take care of you, and we are together, and you know so that yes, people yes. remain people remain, you know, confident yes. because confidence is a very, you know, this is a time where a lot of people went into a lot of depression also. Uh, right, you know, right. Because of total uncertainty, plus sitting at home, plus, you know, loss of income. So, you know, I, I have, uh, you know, you mentioned quite a few of things, you know, support from the government, very smooth, uh, you know, uh, approvals. You, of course, you said you are part of Red Cross. So, you know, you, you are already had the access, but I'm sure <laughs> others needed the yeah. permit and all. But do, do you have any, uh, you know, instance where, you know, you really felt very moved, you know, whether it is some, um, you know, it can be anything, you know, somebody who you didn't expect supported or somebody showed a lot of uh, humanity or a lot of uh, honor or some some people, you know, who themselves are poor trying to help others. Do you have any? Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I, can, I can actually cite, uh, yeah, I can cite two examples. Mm -hmm. uh, one was there in a tribal village. Actually, see, in a village, we are also not having that much of capacity to support the, all the families in a village. So mm -hmm. we had to be selective. Mm -hmm. In a village, if there are 50 families or 100 families, we used to identify the poorest ones and the people and the families which were in need of, I mean, in more need than the others. So that way, we had to be selective. In that case, in one village, actually, we we saw a very exciting example, like, you know, uh, when we went to that village and we we told them that we need, uh, we can give uh, ration only to 40 families. And in that, one person who was taking lead and he was actually preparing the list, the families name that that family is poor, this family is poor, they needed this thing, that thing. So finally, we, he was preparing the list, and I know that person. I know that person. He was a young guy, but he is very, very poor. I mean, he was also not lesser need than the others. 
But finally, what he did, he lay, he prepared the list of 14 families and leaving his name. And he but did not he include did, his name. He did not include his name. So, but later on, what I did, I actually came back and I sent a packet to him also later on. But I think it was an example. I mean, he was, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So he was. Uh, no, it, you know, it's amazing. You know, it's, it's not easy when your family is hungry, and you know, see, we yes, all talk yes, about moral yes. and ethics when we are sitting uh, pushy <laughs> with our thing. But yeah. when when the reality is there, so yes. yeah, so fantastic. Is one example, I think that is something that would excite me that yes, humanity is there. Then yes, there are people who think more for others than their own needs. So Absolutely. that is one example. And another example is, you know, one family was there, uh, one uh, girl actually, and her father has been suffering for a very deadly uh, disease. And during that time, she was not in a position to go to Guwahati and medicines were available only in Guwahati. It was not available locally. And during that time, it was not possible to move from this place to Guwahati and because no vehicle, nobody was allowed to give, go to, uh, you know, cities. So that time I was personally called that this is my situation. If something is not done, so then my father will actually be in trouble. I mean, very soon by tomorrow, if I do not get this medicines. So then, because as I said, no, it was easy for me to travel because, you know, I had that, uh, you know, uh, Indian Red Cross Society uh, membership, I mean, executive member, I'm in the district, so I could literally travel to Guwahati. I went to Guwahati only for that purpose, to bring medicine. And when I came back and I gave the medicine, and, uh, you know, that she thanked me in such a manner, I mean, I was, I was very, very, I mean, excited that, yes, and of course, that time itself, I also realized that yes, there could be many people like her or like him that who were actually in need, but we are not in a position to identify those people who were in need and whom, because uh, you know, I cannot just go. I was not in a position to go to every household or every place to see or ask who are in need of such kind of medicines and other things. So there also, I think uh, that is. That was, of course, it was for me. It was a moment of happiness for me. So, but other, uh, the previous example was a little bit different, but this is, it was, I mean, for ex excitement for me, for me. So, uh, this is, I think, uh, yeah, I there are some other instances, but yes, these two were, uh, you know, one is happiness for me, and the, the other point was, you know, how people think for others also. So, that is uh, what I'd like to say. So, so, you know, who knows that, you know, father might have even, it could yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. become fatal, you know, when you are not having some, and they, it's a very smart on her part and courageous on her part to even call you, you know, uh, to get your number and, you know, make yes. the request. I mean, yes. right, right, right. Uh, so it is all, you know, uh, I think one of the things we, we are hearing, uh, you know, in all the cases that, uh, of course, you know, so many people have helped, people who can help, people, as you mentioned, people who are themselves poor are trying to help or, you know, letting go of their thing. But one of the good things which I'm consistently hearing and you're also repeating is the support of the administration. I think that is one dimension which has opened yeah. up to a lot of us, you know, like the likes of healthcare workers, police, for example, you know, police is something we usually we are very negative, right? But the way they control this whole country, you know, 130 crore people <laughs> is this, and sometimes mm. at 18 hours, 24 hours, 36 hour duty on the road. So this is, and, and also many others, you know, the, the people who are not on leave, right? You know, even the people who are on te telecom, the media, you know, they, they have not taken leave, right? They have taken risk their life for us. So that, that way, I think, you know, the whole, uh, COVID has shown a lot of good things, and if we can keep some of this with us, and I'm sh I'm very confident it will stay with many of us, we'll become right. much better people and much better society. So you know, thank you, thanks so much, uh, you know, for your time, and uh, it's always inspiring to hear you. Uh, uh, and uh, you know you 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 are obviously very forward looking even in terms of 
uh, you know, as you mentioned that, you know, you have uh, all the friendly, employee friendly infrastructure, which you already had and you already, you know, you also took this early initiative of ensuring that they are not panicked. You came back to full salary for most of the people, especially the people who, who get paid less, right? With the very quickly, which, which is, I think is a fantastic right. thing because so many people can face, you know, medical emergencies and also reached out to people who are not just your direct beneficiary, but indirectly. Right. So, you, so, uh, you know, that, that, that's, that's great. Uh, not just for you and me, but for the country as a whole, right? <laughs> so, so many good people actually make the country good. So thank you so much. And see you soon. Okay. Whenever we are traveling, either way, we'll meet again. Yes, 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 yes. Please, Stay safe. please come Take and care. we also, so, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for calling me and giving me the opportunity to interact with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Good night.